In 2017, footage from Libya showed migrants being sold as slaves. These men are sold for 1,200 Libyan pounds, $400 a piece. The exploitation prompted outrage and was described as modern slavery, a term now used for the 40 million people worldwide that are being exploited. The word slavery feels heavy, historical, a relic of the past. We picture civilizations built on the backs of forced trade, ships crammed with human cargo bound for cotton fields and sugar plantations. Many believe slavery belongs to history books, yet for 46 million people, it's still a brutal reality. The truth is, our daily lives could just as easily intersect with modern slavery in ways we might not realize. From the Libyan markets where humans are sold for as little as $400 each, to the children mining minerals for our phones in the Congo, to the women in Bangladeshi factories toiling for pennies to make the clothes we wear. They sell Africans over there. In Libya, they sell men. Even 15-year-old Libyans are there in a car, they're armed, They'll come and kidnap you, and they'll sell you for $70 to $150, and then others will resell you. Slavery's invisible hand touches much of what we consume. Those tomatoes on your shelf, the phone in your pocket, the clothes on your back. These could all be linked to a system of exploitation. We are there for two years, for two years, locked up. It's a hell. Uh, when, you, when you see it, it's a big, a big place. It's a big place, and there is a lot of people in there. We suffered a lot. We suffered a lot. Do you see this car? It's starting What's from my hair to my neck. Many individuals from all around the world are forced to work against their will in industries like agriculture, fishing, construction, and manufacturing, often under threat of violence or withheld wages. Countless women and children are trafficked into the sex industry, enduring horrific abuse and exploitation and impoverished individuals are trapped in cycles of debt, forced to work to repay loans with little hope of ever becoming free. The truth is, the legacy of colonialism left a huge mess in many nations. Centuries of exploitation have left wounds that refuse to heal, perpetuating a cycle of poverty and limited opportunities. In the face of such hardship, people become desperate for any opportunity, even if it's a trap set up by traffickers. North Korea, India, China, Pakistan, Qatar, Russia, Turkey. These are but a few of the many countries facing extreme cases of modern slavery today. Generally, we can say that slavery is still everywhere, even in more developed nations like the US. Yes, we've technically gotten past the Atlantic slave trade, but until now, black communities in Africa are still going through slavery. And yes, I say black, because it's a sad reality that modern-day slavery in Africa mostly affects black Africans. For example, in Mauritania, slavery tends to follow racial lines, with black heritine people typically forced to work for lighter-skinned, white Moor communities in agriculture and domestic work. Despite legal reforms, the nightmare continues. Practices like Wahaya persist in northern Nigeria and Niger, condemning girls to a fate as a fifth wife sold into a life of domestic and sexual abuse. Africa is currently the region most vulnerable to modern slavery, with South Sudan, Somalia, Central Africa, and Congo being the most at risk. And while it's true that anyone can become a victim, the majority of those trapped in slavery on the continent are black. But why? Across Africa, modern slavery thrives in the shadows of prejudice, Migrants, minorities, and those ostracized for their race, ethnicity, or sexual orientation face a brutal reality. They are targeted for exploitation. In predominantly black countries like Mali, Mauritania, Niger, Chad, and Sudan, reports reveal entire ethnic groups born into a life of forced labor. They're bought, sold, and traded like property, as if the human race has not moved past that era. And sadly, their governments don't seem to be doing a very good job at addressing this vulnerability. Across Africa, the drums of war echo with horrifying consequences. By 2020, over 24 million people in Sub-Saharan Africa were internally displaced, ripped from their homes by conflict and violence. This brutal reality is a breeding ground for exploitation. Armed groups see displaced populations as easy prey, 
exploiting them to fuel their agendas. Even IDP camps, meant to be sanctuaries, become hunting grounds. The years 2020 to 2022 saw a whirlwind of military takeovers in Burkina Faso, Chad, Guinea, Mali, and Sudan. Failed coups in Niger and Guinea-Bissau further destabilized the region, leaving a trail of displaced people and crippled responses to modern slavery. With weak rule of law and rampant corruption, these countries become safe havens for traffickers and slaveholders. One Nigerian woman recounted her experience, saying, When an armed group kidnapped me, I was forced to marry one of their leaders. Of course, with political instability follows poverty and economic inequality. Two more factors driving the vulnerability in Africa. These crushing weights force desperate families to make unthinkable choices. My father introduced me to husbands when I was 12. This was the statement of a Sudanese female on her forced marriage at age 17. Daughters are seen as a financial burden, married off young to reduce costs and bring in a dowry. Children, robbed of a childhood, are thrust into the workforce. In 2020, Sub-Saharan Africa had more child laborers than the rest of the world combined. Why? Because poverty breeds desperation, making them easy prey for the worst forms of child labor. Limited job opportunities offer no escape. People are forced to migrate, becoming vulnerable to exploitation by unscrupulous recruiters in high-demand sectors like agriculture, construction, and domestic work. Climate change adds fuel to the fire. Estimates predict 86 million internal climate migrants in sub-Saharan Africa by 2050, creating a vast pool of potential victims. The war may change, but the suffering and the risk of exploitation continues. At this point, you may be wondering, what are governments in the region doing to address modern slavery? Are they doing anything at all? The answer is, they're trying, but their efforts are not enough. Human rights organization, Walk Free, assessed 51 countries in the region and found that their governments have a weak response to modern slavery, scoring an average of 36%. While there have been improvements in identifying cases and developing laws against modern slavery, significant gaps remain in support services for survivors. Limited action has been taken to address the root causes of modern slavery, and no country has effectively addressed the issue in government or business supply chains. After I reported them to labor, they bribed someone who works at labor, and I was told to return to work. This statement was from a 29-year-old female domestic worker in Botswana. While no African nation has yet fully criminalized all forms of modern slavery, legal progress has been made in recent years. Several countries have adopted the ILO's forced labor protocol and the Republic of the Congo specifically outlawed human trafficking in 2019. Almost all of the governments assessed have also trained their police forces in identifying victims of modern slavery. This progress is encouraging, although many still need to implement this critical training. While governments are striving to solve this pressing issue, citizens are desperately finding ways to cope with the struggles in their environment. When all seems lost, they turn to faith and strive for freedom through faith. Sheikh Armiyawo Shaibu, spokesperson for Ghana's national chief imam, stated that faith leaders can identify victims and help victims by putting them in touch with professionals who can help them and who can help deal with the perpetrators. Meanwhile, outside the continent, global efforts are being made to combat modern slavery. International organizations, governments, NGOs, and activists are all working to address its root causes and support its victims. Governments worldwide are passing laws to combat trafficking and forced labor, and public awareness campaigns are educating people about these crimes. Many companies are now being held accountable for ensuring their supply chains are free from exploitation. Africa, Asia, Europe, so many countries within these continents are dealing with slavery today, and there are many more in other places that are not often talked about. Africa is the continent with the highest prevalence of slavery, but that does not disregard the many other hidden slaves all over the world. Different races, different cultures, all going through the same wickedness we've dealt with before. It only goes to show that just because the governments no longer allow it, doesn't mean that it no longer happens. While the abolition of black slavery was a huge achievement for mankind, 
our fight against all forms of slavery continues. Fortunately, there's hope. We overcame the evil eras of slavery. So certainly, we can eventually put an end to modern slavery and the wickedness of individuals with backward mentalities. By staying vigilant, raising awareness, supporting victims, and advocating for stronger legal protections, we can work towards a future where everyone is free from exploitation and able to live with dignity. Thank you for joining us on this insightful journey as we raise awareness on modern slavery. If you found this video insightful, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel for more thought-provoking discussions. Let's continue the conversation in the comments below. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed, and most importantly, stay faithful to your values. We hope you'll be with us for our next video.